21 civilians injured, one of them a child, in a Russian airstrike in Zaporizhia. Ukrainian armed forces struck two ammunition depots overnight, triggering at least 2,000 tons of explosives in southern Russia. The Ukrainian 95th Air Assault Brigade broke through Russian defense lines in the Kursk region, opening a new front line. Hi, I'm Zhenya Melnik and this is United 24 Media. 21 civilians were injured, one child among them, in a Russian airstrike in Zaporizhia on September 23, according to the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine. Local officials reported seven glide bombs were used to hit the central region, damaging 13 residential buildings and two educational institutions as a result. First responders, along with members of the Red Cross, Explosive Ordnance Disposal Teams and the police, helped to clear the debris and uh, rescue the wounded. I was already asleep with my son when the bomb suddenly struck. Our windows were shattered, the balcony stand was torn off, and my son was hit by the window frame. He is stressed at the moment, he is shaken and his head was scratched by stray shots. Governor Ivan Fedorov said on his Telegram channel that Russia has conducted a total of 363 ground and air strikes over the last 24 hours in 12 settlements in the broader Zaporizhia region. President Zelensky paid a visit to an army ammunition plant in Pennsylvania, the production site for 155mm artillery shells, as stated in his Telegram channel. Zelensky arrived in the US on September 22 to attend the upcoming sessions at the UN General Assembly. He made this unannounced stop in Scranton, Pennsylvania, also hometown of President Biden, to visit the munitions plant, which he said was ramping up the manufacture of crucial artillery shells to help the Ukrainian war effort. We um, are blessed to have so many Ukrainians living here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the second largest number in the entire United States of America. And we feel a special kinship to them and to all of you uh, in your work to defend Ukraine. During a tour of the plant, both President Zelensky and Governor Josh Shapiro signed a sister state agreement between Pennsylvania and Ukraine's Zaporizhia region and autographed how its surrounds made at the facility. Zelensky praised the plant's workers for their critical contribution to Ukraine's defense efforts against Russian aggression. We are thankful to President Biden, bipartisan support, and thanks to such plants and such workers, officers, soldiers, surgeons, for such support that you stay with us. Thank you, Governor, for such words. We are ready for conversation. The ammunition plant in Scranton plays a key role in the Ukrainian war effort, supplying shells sought out by Ukrainian ground forces. The plant cuts and forges 900 kg bars of steel into 155 mm Hobbitzer rounds that are then shipped to Iowa, to be packed with explosives and fitted with fuses. From there, many of them make their way to the fight in Ukraine. Back in August, it was reported by the Associated Press that the factory had increased production by 50% to meet a surge in demand, with even more capacity set for the future. To follow the latest news from Ukraine, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ukrainian armed forces struck two ammunition depots overnight, triggering at least 2,000 tons of explosives in southern Russia. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine stated via their Facebook page that on the night of September 21st a joint drone operation was conducted by the security service and unmanned system forces. These drone strikes targeted the arsenal in Krasnodar region when Russian forces were reportedly stockpiling 2,000 tons of ammunition delivered from North Korea. The ammo base located in Tikharetsk is one of the three largest depots in Russia, alongside the one obliterated by Ukrainian UAVs back on September 18th in the Tver region. Moreover, Ukrainian forces doubled down in the Tver region, hitting the 23rd arsenal of Russia's defense ministry, located near the village of Oktabrsky. Forbes suggests that these recent strikes have been highly destructive, seemingly pointing to a drone packing more power, and available in large numbers. This might be in reference to Ukraine's new jet-powered Palenitsa, a cruise missile in all but name. Russians on the ground in Toropias reported hearing jet engines overhead before the local munition stockpile exploded. Satellite images show the damage after a Russian intercontinental ballistic missile exploded during test launch. Photos from the Maxar satellite were shared on September 22 by the Institute for the Study of War representative George Barros on X. The explosion created a giant crater almost 62 meters wide with visible damage to surrounding buildings. 
the Russian Ministry of Defense showcases the RS-28 Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile as a critical advancement in nuclear deterrence. Although the missile entered service in 2023 after a successful launch in April 2022, all subsequent attempts to test launch these missiles have failed. The RS-28 Sarmat, often referred to as Satan II, is a three-stage Russian ICBM with the capability to fly over the South Pole and reach targets such as the US, as stated by the Russian Ministry of Defense. A Russian glide bomb targeted a residential building in Kharkiv, wounding 18 people, among them three children, informed the state's emergency service on September 22. 68 people were evacuated from the high-rise 16-story building where the bomb exploded. Seven neighboring buildings and 21 cars in the surrounding area were also damaged. It took 44 first responders to clear the rubble and rescue the injured civilians. The summer records over 3,000 civilian casualties in Ukraine, including 589 killed. This was reported by the Norwegian Refugee Council, citing the United Nations Human Rights Monitoring Group on September 23rd. According to the data, the summer of 2024 sees the highest three-month period of civilian casualties since the start of the full-scale war with Russia. Powerful missiles and bombs have struck populated areas, killing and injuring civilians across the country, said head of HRMMU Danielle Bell. Targeted attacks on Ukraine's critical energy infrastructure have again triggered lengthy nationwide power cuts, while recent attacks have destroyed or damaged hospitals, schools and supermarkets, reported the head of the monitoring group. The Ukrainian 95th Air Assault Brigade has broken through Russian defense lines in Kursk, says the Airborne Command on its Facebook page. Footage shows a tank unit gaining a foothold in Russian defensive areas as sappers and stormtroopers emerge out of the Ukrainian convoy. This marks the second occasion the Russian state line has been crossed since the start of the incursion back in August. This time near the settlement of Medvezhia, 25 kilometers west of the currently held territories. This is it for today. We are United24 Media. Thank you for being with us and see you on Wednesday.